second chapter is about how the blood flow in the lungs is and how it comes or how is it related to the gases in the lung so you have the lung as a junction as a junction or a or a station where two trains come together one train is the blood which is which has arrived here to get oxygenated offload its carbon dioxide the second train is the air that you bring in okay uh, for fresh fresh oxygenation and taking away the unloaded carbon dioxide so both of these trains they arrive at in the, in the lungs all the time the bogies they interchange or intersect in the lungs all the time how is this arranged is the topic is the focus of chapter number 2 of respiratory physiology in guide okay how do these two flows blood flow air flow or ventilation how is it arranged physically arranged we need to understand certain peculiarities of the vessels of the lung we call it pulmonary vasculature or pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation has a few peculiarities i.e it's different from the systemic circulation in two three very very important ways okay uh an examiner can ask you about these differences in a go so in a viva usually we are looking for summaries not long long explanation so you may know the explanation the long one of say one or two but in a viva usually we are after lists list the three three differences between pulmonary and systemic circulation okay so one big one just to give you a flavor of what we are talking about is whenever there is hypoxia in systemic circulation what is systemic circulation systemic circulation is every circulation other than lung so the entire body is on one side it's called systemic circulation and the lung is on one side it's called the pulmonary circulation okay why is this uh, discrimination with the lung well because the heart the right side of the heart pumps its entire output into one organ the lung and the left it pumps its entire output into the rest of the entire body so that basically differentiates between these two circulations from this immediately the perceptive student would would feel that hmm so both of the cardiac outputs being equal and they are equal you are studying heart right okay you will study cardiac output you will study what what's uh, what is a cardiac output and how both of the ventricles have the same cardiac output because they are linked in parallel or series they are in series they are in series so the right one needs to work for the left one to work if the right stops eventually the left will stop because where is the blood coming in the uh, left from from the lungs where is the blood in the lungs coming from from the right so it's like this right then left right then left so whatever right does with the lung lung does with the left side of the heart okay this is how they are connected so check this out if the left ventricle pumps 5 liters per minute in the entire body and that's what it is it is that the right needs to provide that 5 liters through the lungs to the left ventricle that's a very straight forward equation but imagine those 5 liters need to be per minute accommodated in one organ as compared to for the left for the left the field is very wide the whole body but for the right the field is only the lungs so immediately you should arrive at one conclusion that the compliance and now you should know what the word compliance means i will not explain the compliance of the vascular of the vessels of the lung is much much higher has to be as compared to its systemic circulation cousins okay and it is the case it's a very compliant tree the pulmonary vasculature is a very highly compliant tree 
it distends per unit pressure a lot because it needs to accommodate the entire cardiac output of the right right side okay so that is one peculiarity there is one difference between these two so pulmonary artery is thinner larger in diameter highly extensible basically overall it's very very compliant because it needs to accommodate a lot of blood all the time pulmonary veins are nearly the same as systemic veins this is difference number 1 These are pressures. Just uh, look at these pressures. When you will uh, reach th this information for the left side in the heart physiology lectures, you will appreciate that these these pressures. So look at pulmonary artery. Systolic pressure 25, diastolic 8. Okay, as compared to systemic circulation, where the systolic pressure is 120 and the diastolic is 80. so from that point of view look at these pressures they are very low pressures okay so uh, again the rest is very very uh, you just need to learn it uh, the main main pressures are these in that the main pressures are these actually the systemic 25 by 8 this you need to remember and the mean of this is 15 so at all the time there is a gradient between the pulmonary artery side and pulmonary vein side that gradient of pressure is 15 mmhg average average so from the arterial part of the of the lung to its venous part the downward slope the pressure which is pushing the blood through the entire lung across from arteries to veins is 15 mmhg this is the context of this 15 mmhg okay. so inside the lung there are actually two circulations one is pulmonary which we are uh, repeatedly uh, mentioning a very important mention of bronchial circulation bronchial circulation very simply put is the blood supply of the lung itself it's a living tissue it needs nourishment it needs oxygen itself so that part of circulation is called bronchial circulation that is different from pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation is what the pulmonary artery brings from the right ventricle and what the pulmonary vein drains into the left atrium that all thing through the gas exchange areas getting fresh oxygen dumping the carbon dioxide all of that blood is part of pulmonary circulation okay however the bronchial circulation is the blood supply to the tissue of the lung itself to nourish it to keep it alive is this is this uh, difference you have you have uh, uh, yani you have noted this the difference between pulmonary and bronchial is a very key question it's a very easy question but it can be off throwing sometimes in again in a while it does present a small problem this is the problem this is the problem because what's the difference between pulmonary vein and bronchial vein then i was to question yes pulmonary vein would carry oxygenated blood wouldn't it it would you know this and if you don't know this go and revise from your fsc books bronchial veins however are typical veins they carry deoxygenated blood because pulmonary uh, bronchial uh, circulation we have talked about now the problem is where do the bronchial veins dump their deoxygenated blood usually venous blood is received where in the right side of the heart and then very nicely it's is it's guided to the lung for oxygenation however lungs own blood own perfusion blood own blood that has given it nourishment and taken away the carbon dioxide where would it go it goes because the architecture the arrangement is such that it goes to the left side of the heart now immediately you should frown okay what's going on here it is deoxygenated blood yes it will mess up our nice pure oxygenated blood which is coming in from the pulmonary veins which we have taken so much effort to oxygenate right yes it does it pollutes it a bit so the the oxygen levels of oxygenated blood are higher 
before they come arrive in the heart because in the heart they get mixed with that little amount of deoxygenated bronchial blood okay one and if you really want to remember it in detail heart's own blood heart is also an organ it needs nourishment so the coronary vessels of the heart itself also have a venous division so that venous division also gets dumped into the left side of the heart so both of these small adulterations or pollutants not pollutants but adulterations drop the oxygen concentration of your blood which is arriving from the pulmonary circulation and it does and it gets dropped from 104 which is the nice fresh full oxygen to 95 when you bring out fresh blood from the alveoli the oxygen tension the oxygen po2 partial pressure of oxygen in that blood in the pulmonary vein blood is 104 104 mmhg however as soon as these two dilutions happen inside the heart it drops to 95 mmhg and this is fine it's not a lot of drop but this is an important point to note okay right it's a very uh, it looks busy but it's a very simple thing this is gvd bronchial artery arises from uh, the aorta that's a good question the fresh fresh blood good question and you will obviously be doing a lot of this uh, origins and uh, terminations in anatomy when you study the anatomy of the heart and the lungs okay so this is one another peculiarity between forget about what's here just listen to me this is another peculiarity another difference between the pulmonary vasculature and the systemic uh, uh, vasculature whenever in a systemic artery the pressure rises you will do it in circulation whenever the pressure rises in a systemic vessel it tends to contract block that away we will do it later on whenever there is pressure rising in a systemic vessel it tends to contract and resist that pressure from going forwards it's a protective mechanism we call it vascular compliance we will we will study this when we study circulation however the reverse exact reverse happens in pulmonary vasculature when you increase the pressure inside the pulmonary vasculature it tends to dilate it's literally another technology that is used in pulmonary vasculature it doesn't contract it contracts elsewhere but the pulmonary vessels whenever you so for example you have started to exercise when you start to exercise the right cardiac output would increase wouldn't it so at rest it's 5 liters per minute but when you exercise it may go up to 10 or 15 if you really are pumping it may go up to 25 liters per minute right how will the lung accommodate it but dilated vessels are dilated like anything and they accommodate that high pressure keeping the same pressures inside the lung because look if they don't dilate and you increase pressure what can happen what can happen is they might be oozing of fluid outside the vessels causing edema pulmonary edema is a medical emergency people can die from pulmonary edema not peripheral edema it's a nuisance it's a problem but edema inside the lung is fatal can be fatal if it's not treated urgently so normally it does not ever happen because of this property of the vessels of the of the lungs they dilate they relax as you increase pressure very important point to note okay one other thing happens so not all the vessels of the lung are open at all times they don't need to so let let me put it this way 
you have some regular clothes right which you like which you tend to wear all the time then you have some backup clothes which are reserved for some good occasions or whenever you feel more colorful than usual that's backup stuff exactly not exactly but it's a, it's a, it's an example the lung has been given lots and lots of vessels lots and lots of alveoli more than what are what is required at rest because whoever made the lung knew that your need would might increase temporarily but then very importantly would come back to rest so those extra bits of vessels and alveoli they are only open when you need them so as an exercise and so on and so forth but normally you are working with your regular clothes the regular number of alveoli and the regular number of vessels that are uh, uh, supplying those open alveoli so the entire lung is not open all the time in terms of alveoli and vessels so one of the ways of describing what happens when you increase pressure is recruitment so those closed vessels are opened by rising pressure and if even if, if that is not enough then the distensions take place so first what happens is those vessels which are not usually used by the ves uh, by the lung get opened up that that would that would then address the increased blood pressure that you have just introduced even if is that is that that doesn't uh, solve the issue then dilations take place in all of those vessels okay and combined these two things recruitment and distension take care of the rising pressure okay of course within physiological range if the heart fails the left heart fails what do you think should happen would happen not the right the left if the left heart is failing it is the right side is working fine so the right side is pumping blood inside the lung the lung is working fine the lung is dumping that blood into the left atrium however when the left atrium dumps its blood into the left ventricle the left ventricle is working at say 25% less than normal there is an there is a mi or myocardial infarction heart attack so the 100% working ventricle left ventricle is now down to 75% what do you think would happen inside the lung there will be pooling of blood because it's not going forwards 25% of blood is staying in the heart so back pressure starts to rise that pressure eventually starts to rise in the lung now we have trouble edema will ensue and all sorts of issues normally it doesn't it has a protective thing against pulmonary edema okay another peculiarity and this is a very big one is whenever there is hypoxia in systemic circulation in systemic circulation whenever there is hypoxia there is vasodilation so if you were to really clench your uh, your wrist here like this and press it hard okay what will happen is there will be ischemia less blood supply of your right hand when is there is less blood supply there will be less oxygen that will go into it can we say that hypoxia has happened to the right hand right hand due to this ischemia ischemia is less blood flow hypoxia is low tension of oxygen okay so this this clenching of the right wrist caused is uh, uh, ischemia what uh, what was saying hypoxia due to less blood flow okay now when i release it when i release the physical thing there will be rushing of blood inside the right hand because of vasodilation of the vessels this is how the systemic circulation reacts to hypoxia it vasodilates tries to compensate for the lost oxygen however very interestingly if you have a hypo uh, hypoxic situation inside the lung the vessels in that area will go into vasoconstriction you would think why why there is already hypoxia why are we vasoconstricting those vessels 
Well, the answer is pretty straightforward because why would you dilate them in the first place? The area is hypoxic. The area is not receiving proper air, proper oxygen from outside. It's hypoxic. So in lung, a hypoxic area is a useless area. Why would you want to give it blood? So you constrict it. You divert blood to the area which are more aerated, more normal air is coming to them. You load them and you divert blood away from this area which is now temporarily useless or maybe permanently useless. Okay. Very important point to know that hypoxia has a absolutely opposite reaction to the blood vessels of the lung. That's all. A full alveolus and a half filled alveolus has an effect on the alveolar vessels. So if, a, if an alveolus is quite full, overfilled with air, <clears throat> it compresses the alveolar vessels here by virtue of its weight. However, this whole thing, it's literally when you, when you put water inside a balloon, inflated with water, it goes down because it becomes heavy. So imagine that. I was thinking of how should I explain this to you. So if you overinflate an alveolus, it just bogs down, it goes down with it. The vessels which are underneath it will obviously be compressed, but what about the vessels which are, which the alveolar vessel is hanging from? This will have a, a tug on it, it will have a pull on it because the alveolus is sinking down, down. So this tugging effect will dilate them. This is a small point, okay? And the reverse is, when the alveolus is not properly filled, the alveolar flow will be much more than the feeding vessels. Feeding vessels. If you're interested, you can read this up. Why do we mention it? Now we are introducing the BQ. Now it starts, the, the main presentation. The, re the reason we, we now are focusing on the alveolus and its vessels is because we want to understand how, what is the type of relationship <clears throat> that alveolus and the air inside alveolus has on the blood which is passing through the alveolar vessels. Because this is the place literally where oxygenation takes place, gas exchange takes place. So the oxygen comes out from the alveolus into the alveolar blood and carbon dioxide goes into reverse. So whatever you have learned about the lung up till now actually takes place here. V and Q. Ventilation inside the alveolus, Q is blood flow in the alveolar vessels. These two are the parameters to actually think about, to understand. Then you will understand <clears throat> the function of lung.